Just uh, can uh, can you update us here as we're starting phase three of the off season program for y'all? Just kind of where we're at. Yeah. So uh, we've already had one OTA and we're just trying to take advantage of the, of the opportunity to get out of here and continue to work. There's things we want to you know improve on and the communication when you're you know once we continue whether it's offensively or defensive or special teams things that we've added in the off season. So there's a lot of th things we want to work on. Uh, you know, keep it in perspective. It's a build-up phase. You know, there's things that aren't really, that don't simulate real football. Certainly, in the lines of scrimmage, we try to be smart about. Some of the things you want to work on on the perimeter. Uh, we still want to be very smart. We're not going to be out there playing a bunch of bump and run and grabbing and stuff like that. So it's all about perspective. And there's a lot of things we'll ask the quarterbacks to do is we're trying to push the ball and new things that uh, you know, try to take advantage of that. A lot of individual development out there as well. And uh, how are you attendance-wise? I counted 48 from the videos. Um, I know it's voluntary, but, uh, but uh, how are you attendance-wise? Good. Um, I guess we'll find out in a little bit. Every day is different, it's right? It's voluntary. Sure. It's off-season. And different guys and different veterans have different things, and, uh, and that's real. And, I've never sit there and we don't guilt trip anybody. You're going to make the team by how you perform in August. And there's life that happens outside of this building. You know, guys that, uh, you know, maybe they, you know, they're having their first child or, you know, something comes up and there's a family issue. And that's it's the off season. I mean, that's, there's life outside of this building. We, I mean, we got the right guys here. And uh, health wise, as far as the guys that were on IR last year, are, are they back or, or, some of them back and trying to get them. Uh, I guess Taekwon and Kyle are the, the two big ones. The other three kind of were back, and I guess Huntley's not expected back. Well, we value everybody, whether it's player one or player 90. You know, the, their safety, where they're at. I mean, the most important thing is getting our team ready to play September 10th. So everybody's on different return to play. Uh, you know, we're, you guys are missing a, a teammate, right? Rothstein, he's on a return to play on IR. You know, I didn't put a timeline on him because, you know, had certain players that may have had that injury, they've come back in a week. So I don't know. So uh, everybody's different. I heard you driving now. So. Well, it's good to know the update. I'm glad you're giving the injury report. <laughs> Specific to Kyle, though, is he able to practice? What's he able to do during OTAs this time of year? Just like the rest of our guys, everybody's to work on different things and different return to play, trying to get the best shape possible so we're ready to go September 10th. Um, we try to get creative. There are certain guys that are different points of their career, no different. But uh, we feel pretty good about where everybody's at. I don't, you know, that's not a practice. It's an organized team activity, and there's so practice would be different. You know, you'd actually be competing on the lines of scrimmages. Be sitting there working on. You're not going to see us run the football right now. We haven't run the football here in the spring. I mean, it's not what we're trying to do here. Uh, but there are certain things we work on that you'll you'll see out there. And there's there may be some things going on up front that aren't necessarily to the Speed on the perimeter, but it's all part of a plan as we build up, get ready for camp, and then obviously uh, the regular season. What if, if, what, if anything specifically, are you looking for Desmond to do, handle himself through this part of the process? All of our quarterbacks and any player. Is, can we continue to improve? Um, can we get like a rating, about a practice rating, or feel no, good, I'm feel not, good I'm about not, a bunch of checkdowns? Like no, I'm but in all seriousness, Josh. No, I know. I'm, I'm being facetious here about the hype that. You know, it's kind of a boring time of year in the calendar, and there's a lot of hype and a lot of runaway right. narratives. A Absolutely. Himself, yeah, right? same thing. It's like, can you continue to improve on the way that yourself? We ask him pre-snap, post-snap, line of scrimmage. Um, you know, certain looks. You know, we're working to the right spot. Those things, all that stuff matters. Those are things you can control, and you're trying to simulate as just another step to build up, and ultimately in the camp to get ready to play. But ult but any player here, it's all about the improvement. And um, but it's the same thing for Taylor or Logan or Austin or any quarterback or receiver. So uh, there's no after day one, there's no magical update that I think we're ready to go play week one. Whether that be if I had a 18 year veteran or a guy going into the second year. Is this also a good time for him to maybe build relationships with guys since they want to get into? Yeah, I think that matters, Jeff. It does. I think even the communication on the defensive line too. Right, those are guys that. You know, every year, I mean, it's just the way the league is now. You just, you know, we've been through a lot of transitions 
you know, with our circumstances, but I think year after year, you're seeing it around the league. I mean, you, you may have a big rookie class, you know, there's guys, it's the way it's, the way it's set up. You know, a lot of guys that are not going to play same team for 10 years. It's the way it is. And so I think every year you're, you want to build that communication that matters. So that is something that you can take advantage of this time of year. I mean, it helps in any industry. Get to know your, co you know, your teammates, your coworkers, you know, the communication you may have on the back end. That helps at every level of the defense, offense, special teams, punt team. Those are things that absolutely uh, we're looking to enhance. I'm curious with him, unlike last year, with him knowing he's just he as a starter now, does, is he carrying himself any differently? Does he seem any different as, as he comes across? I think anybody, the more experience you get, the more reps you have. I mean, certainly his mindset, you know, it's different when you're out there, you know, you're taking the first reps and guys know that you're anticipated to be the, the day one starter. And so, you know, those are, those are important. The reps he gets with Drake, certainly all those guys. Yeah, that helps. I did, that definitely your mindset changes whether I want to pretend like it doesn't or not. Yes, it does. Well, we've heard from uh, defensive players here in the off season and these mm -hmm. availabilities. A lot of guys have mentioned Calais, his leadership, his presence, his experience. What do you hope he brings off the field, especially at this time of year? Well, as veterans, I think we've got a good mix of guys that are, that are veterans, whether it's Calais or Bud. Uh, certainly Grady's a veteran that uh, got great leadership habits. But when you, it's not just about, OK, this guy, and I think this is what makes Calais unique. Uh, sometimes you bring in the wrong guy, he may have a perceived or perception right out there that he's this great leader and then the guy, his habits aren't very good or it's not really authentic. Uh, that's, you better bring the right veterans in here. And uh, Clay certainly fits that mold. And uh, it's real. We're, we're glad he's here. And then same thing about Bud Dupree. Very happy with Bud. He's going to do it his own way and the way his habits. Those are the things that whether I'm preaching or Ryan's preaching or Hux or Lanier, it is powerful too when those guys and they're they've done it. They can they can pass that down and their knowledge um, and their habits. And so we're excited. David Anyamata, another guy that's a veteran, brings a presence in, into that room. Um, that's what I'm excited about. When it comes to a guy like Matthew Bergeron, young guy who's mm -hmm. being asked to do something relatively new, when. It comes to you, what you're looking for in him. When you look at his development, what are active steps in his development that you can actively see right now, even though you're not going 110%? You don't have no, I think a lot of it is, is the mental. I mean, there's a lot of individual work. Uh, again, the way that we operate, you know, the train's moving. And so we, you know, we have our own individual development plans for every player in our program. But you got to understand that he's a rookie. But if you want to get ready to play on Sunday against the guys that actually line up and play, uh, you got to you got to be able to to keep up, and so a lot of times that pace, guys think they're in great shape, and then they all of a sudden they get around Chris and Jake, and they realize hey, there's another notch, and that's for him and and, and Gwen the same thing, and uh, you know there's, there's a lot thrown at them, and then the mentally, you know, it's a completely new offense. Whether you've played, you don't move positions the offensive line, it's all going to be new to them. So it, you go back to the communication that Jeff asked. It's, a lot of them made these blocks, or maybe a little technique thing you're trying to add here or there, and maybe a little bit different. It's what you're calling that. It's like learning a new language. And those combinations, hey, I've worked with a tackle guard combination on the backside. What are we calling it? There's a new language that has to be learned. That's, that's one thing that does help, going back to Desmond, the consistency of not having to learn a new language in the spring, where you're not just trying to memorize the play. There's, there's other things going on or formations. Designing since we last got to talk at rookie mini camp, is there anything you can say about just that group as a whole um, as to why you wanted to bring some of these players in, whether it's for special teams or fill certain roles or whatnot? Yeah, we think a guy has a chance to help us win, I mean, whatever his role is. Like again, I, I don't, I don't know why people devalue anybody that's up now. That you're allowed to put 49 players up if you want to go that route. They need to have a job. They're going to help us win. I, so if, it, if a guy come, comes in here and they, they come from everywhere, you see that story year after year. Guys that make camps, rookie trial guys, the guys that even are rookies. I mean, the most famous play, I think, of Malcolm Butler, guys with Tennessee. Got a chance to enhance the roster, and you know, there's nothing that's going to be given. You got to be earned, and if you're going to 
continue to do that. And we, we're in a great organization. It allows us to bring a lot of people in to try out. And uh, doesn't mean it ever gets any easier, you know, when you've got to make those moves. You wish you could have 150 players. You can't. So that part's not lost to me either. But, um, yeah, that, that competition and, and guys that deserve an opportunity to go into camp and see if they can earn a roster spot. And ultimately, if they're up part of the 48 or 49, whatever we decide to do, uh, they're, held, they're here to help us win. Whether they're undrafted, eighth round players, tryout, let's call them ninth round players, it doesn't matter. They can help us win. That's what we're looking for. Going back to the new group of veterans that are here, just as a whole, what impact do you feel like they've already made here? It's, it's early. I mean, it's just, uh, again, goes back to the right players, the professionalism, the way they approach their job, and there are different points in the career and the, their training methods and you know, the way we do business here, but there's also other things they can bring to them about what's important. You know, when you're 21, you know, you probably think you only need a couple hours of sleep. You can eat whatever you want. You're laughing, D-Leg, because you know that's true. All of a sudden, you get to 30, like, dang. You know, so as you get older, and certainly you feel it at every different benchmark. But, uh, but those things pass down, right? It's important to get to sleep. It's important to create great habits now, recovery, nutrition, and they're, they're living proof of it. And they can tell stories of great players that couldn't sustain for Maybe they didn't have the right habits. I don't. I don't know. But those are that 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 wisdom can be passed down if you got the right guys, and we feel like we do. Talking about wisdom, I don't know if I've asked you this before, but with Jerry Gray and mm -hmm. his experience in the league and, and kind of what he's been able to do throughout his career, how do you kind of see that even really early on in, the, in these first few days really impacting some of these guys in the secondary? Yeah, he's got a wealth of knowledge. Um, Certainly, Jerry, as a player, you know, having played different spots, different schemes. Um, and some guys at any, you know, whether they played at any level, sometimes they, 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 they just try to relate too much about, oh, this is how I did it. It's not one size fits all. And the great coaches have been around, and I've been around some great coaches that were great players in this league. And I think of Mike Munchak, who's got a gold jacket, and a Boston Canton, and he met him on one of the best problem solvers I've ever think because he knew what – he needed, but it wasn't what the next guy needed either. And so Jerry's got that unique ability, the teaching, and he's got a lot of perspective. He's been a lot of different schemes. And so, you know, we're just trying to problem solve. And so whether that's behind the scenes and we're talking or Ryan and him are talking, we're going to make it our own. And that's when you hire the right people, smart people that got passion for this job, that are great teachers, and that want to work. Uh, it's how we've evolved, you know, things that, Maybe we did in Tennessee that we've certainly now going to year three guys when you have the right staff members. So Jerry, um, yeah, I mean, Jerry's obviously means a lot to me personally, things he's taught me along the way and then where he's at now, he's a very in a different spot and he's never stopped learning. And so it's refreshing when you got, you get to work with people like that. You and Jerry have talked about having a competitive camp when it comes to that mm -hmm. time. What do you kind of look for now to make sure that Maybe a foundation is laid for that happening yeah. in a couple of months. Yeah, just, you know, it, it, it's perspective. And again, there's 32 different flavors for, for us. We try to keep the perspective. Like, we're in an individual development phase. And it goes back to the, as we're trying to build up. And I, I, I look at it as more of a build up. Here's what the rules are. It's like everything. When these rules get passed, like, you can give your opinion, but ultimately, those are the rules. And so you try to know the rules as best possible and try to find advantage, coach the right way. So, same thing. Like, these are the OTAs. Like this isn't, we're not in pads, we're not tackling, we're not, uh, you know, there's not contact up front. And so we know that. So how do we take, best take advantage of that? So that's what year after year, you're always looking to improve the program. And so those things right now, we, we can get those things out of the communication, the habits, the way we work, um, all those things. So when you go in the training camp, like the mental part, we've had an off season of that. And as we're pushing to the physical part, which will be in the training phase, which is training camp. So there's a lot that we can accomplish if we have the right mindset when we come out here every day. And, I, and, and so far we have, whether it's been in phase one, the phase two, you know, the short sample size we have already in OTAs. Uh, yeah, Coach, um, how's Jesse Bates, when we're talking about the veterans, how's he moving about and uh, fitting in? Great. Enough? You know, Jesse, um, he'll be one guy, I'm sure, you know, can probably eliminate one of your hot takes, but uh, he's at home awaiting um, a birth of a, of a child. So. And that's, that's important. That's more important than anything we're doing right now. And so I'm glad Jesse's 
Jesse's back home, but Jesse's been in here every day. So I hate to eliminate that hot take for you, Dillette, but uh, he's been awesome. And we're happy to have Jesse, and, and Jesse is. He, he's kind of that mid tier veteran, it's no different than Chris Lindstrom. Any thoughts on the passing of Jim Brown? He was a great, great player, legend in this league. Um, certainly had an impact in a, in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, it's uh, it's sad, but uh, but he had an enormous impact on the game of football and the game of lacrosse too. But in a lot of other things that are bigger than football and in life.